we pour some boiling water into a vacuum flask, put in a piece of panaplex with a thermal sensor in it and allow that piece to heat up. Now its temperature is nearly 85 degrees. We take out the panaplex piece and hold it in our hands without burning them. But it's unlikely that anybody would want to put their hand into the water of this temperature because one can severely scold oneself. The difference can be explained by the fact that panaplex has very low specific thermal capacity. Even though it's hot, its thermal energy reserve is small. Besides, it has very low thermal conductivity, so heat passes into the hand really slowly. To see how heat propagates in a solid, let's conduct an experiment. Iron nails are wax attached to a copper rod at equal distance from each other. We light a gas burner and move it near one end of the rod. The heat from the heated end propagates through the rod and when the temperature near the next coming nail becomes equal to the temperature of wax melting, the nail falls down. Copper is a good heat conductor so everything happens rather quickly. Besides, thermal input is very powerful because the end of the rod at which the flame was directed gets red hot. When it's cold outside, heat gets out of the house through the walls. These losses have to be compensated by burning fuel and creating new portions of thermal energy. What does the penetration of heat through the walls depend on? First of all, it depends on what the walls are made of. Metals are great conductors, so one shouldn't make walls out of them. A brick wall of the same thickness is a hundred times less conductive. By the way, snow is a fine heat insulator. It covers the ground in winter and doesn't allow it to get frozen through. In an Eskimo hut called igloo, one can take off his clothes and feel comfortable. Secondly, thermal flow intensity depends on the thickness of the wall. A wall twice as thick will let through a thermal flow which is twice weaker. This will allow decreasing energy expenditure twice. But instead of making the wall thicker, it's better to insulate it with panaplex or mineral wool. Finally, thermal flow intensity depends on outdoor and indoor temperature difference. If this difference increases twofold, energy expenditure will have to be raised twofold as well. To demonstrate that thermal flow is proportional to temperature difference, let's look at how temperature inside a heated piece of panaplex changes with time. The second sensor will show us room temperature. We can see in this graph that when temperature difference is big, the temperature fall is sharp, but when the difference decreases, the fall becomes more gradual. By the way, can you explain why the eventual temperature of panaplex is lower than room temperature?